Man, I wish it was Sunday already. Three days to go, Dave. I This is as excited as I've been for a football game in a really long time. Yeah. Yeah, this is – I think it's going to be a classic game. It's going to be fun to watch. The atmosphere is going to be insane. And in three days, we just may be finding out we're on our way to Arizona. Yeah. It's exciting times. This is uh, the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. And how lucky are we that – I mean, this team – is in the playoffs just about every year. I mean, the only year since 17 they haven't been was Doug's last year, five of the last six years. And you know, they've this will be their seventh NFC championship game in 20 since what oh oh one in, in St. Louis. So 22 years. Like every three years, they go to the NFC championship game. Mm-hmm. So it's just been an incredible run over two decades of, of football. It's incredible. Yeah. And it's funny because like normally you're excited for every game in, in a certain way. But this like but like I'm excited for it to happen. But this I'm like actually excited to watch the football game. Yeah. Which like not, not that that's rare, but to this extent, it's kind of rare because like this is gonna be a slobber knocker. Like this is gonna be an a heavyweight battle between these two teams. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> no, it is. I, you know, you can make the case that they're two best teams in football, two most most complete teams. Uh, certainly, neither team has a clear weakness. So, and I mean, the Bengals are really, really good. The Chiefs have that offense. Their defense isn't elite, but when they score fifty points a game, it doesn't need to be. Uh, but yeah, this is just like the style of this game. Yeah. Yeah, two great defensive teams that are physical and it's gonna be the most physical game, maybe of the NFL season. Maybe ever. Maybe since <laughs> 1960 NFL championship game. It has that feel though. Like yeah, it these does. teams, even when they played last year, it wasn't a particularly good game. It was early in the second game of the year. Second game of the year, but even that was physical, and that wasn't this, you know. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be next level. Yeah. So we have a lot to get to today. Like a heavyweight boxing match that goes 15. It rounds. feels like it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I watched, I rewatched all the Rockies last week, getting ready for it. I uh, covered some of those heavyweight fights in Atlantic City, like Spinks Cooney. Oh yeah, Tyson Spinks. Yeah, I covered all those fights. It was it was a blast because the parties. You know, if you cover the if you cover the the match, you go to the parties mm-hmm. after, and they are, you know, incredibly lavish and go to like six a.m. and Oof. Plus my bedtime there. Yeah. You, you don't need a hotel. You just go to the party and you go home. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to get to. We yes. have some important up. health updates. Uh, we want to talk about A.J. Brown a little bit and and the scene during that game, after the game. Uh, he, he finally talked to the media. He, he explained himself a little bit. Nick Sirianni was snubbed for coach of the year, was not one of the finalists. So we'll break that down a little bit. But first, uh, we've talked so much about the talent in this game. that Both of these rosters are so talented. So we said, let's try to figure out which roster has the most talent between these two. And this is a very unscientific way to do it, but we're going to go position by position. Work for you? Let's do it. And we're going to start with quarterback, and I I don't think we're going to spend a ton of time here. Uh, One of these quarterbacks has never lost. So Brock Purdy and the 49 – no? Yeah, I mean, what he's done has been incredible, uh, really remarkable for a guy who – you know, when, when training camp started, he was he wasn't he was behind Nate Sudfeld. I mean, he wasn't gonna make the team. He was getting a handful of reps and he just happened to make the best of those reps and got in got ahead of Sudfeld for the number three spot. And you know, Trey Lance got hurt, Garoppolo got hurt, and here he is undefeated going to the NFC championship game. No rookies ever started a Super Bowl at quarterback. So what he's done is incredible, but you give the edge to Jalen. Um the edge. Yeah, it's a bigger than a little edge. Well, I didn't, I didn't quantify it. I said you give the edge to Jalen. Okay. He's more experienced. He's, he's the edge more... makes it sound like it's close. No, it doesn't. The advantage. Well, I'm sorry. You okay. have the advantage. I wasn't saying the size of it. I think, I think it is significant. And uh, I think um, if look the 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 strength of of Brock Purdy is the people around him, and obviously any good quarterback has that. But I think to a really great extent. And he's smart enough to understand that and not try to do too much. But uh, Jalen Hurts is an MVP candidate, and Brock Purdy is an impressive rookie. And to me, there's, there's a big gap there. Yeah, Brock Purdy's not losing games. Jalen's winning them. 
You could say that. Yeah, that's the way I, I did say that. But I mean, I, I do think Brock Purdy has made some amazing throws, some amazing plays. Uh, it's not like he's just dumping the ball off to, you know, to to, to Debo and McCaffrey and, and getting out of the way. I mean, he's he's made some incredible individual efforts here and, and there. He's 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 got talent, but the consistency probably isn't there. Yeah, and a lot of times he is dumping the ball off to Debo and. I said he, that's not all he's doing. I know, but I'm yeah. saying that there are times that that is what he's doing, and yeah. he makes a few really good passes each game. Uh, but Jalen's clearly the better. And he's never, he's never played in an atmosphere like this. He's never seen uh, pass pressure like this. This is going to be a new experience for him. We'll see how he handles it. Yeah. All right, running back, and we'll kind of include the guys that play. So for the Eagles, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Kenny Gainwell. For the Niners, Christian McCaffrey. I'll give Kyle Juice check here because he's a fullback. He was on fullback, but he plays a lot. And Elijah Mitchell. Where are you going here? Very close. I think the Niners have the edge. Yeah, small edge. I mean, I I think it's significant, honestly. Yeah, uh, I don't know if, how significant it is. I mean, if you add up what Miles and Gainwell have done compared to what McCaffrey's done, you know, but they, they run the ball really well. Yeah, and Elijah Mitchell has become a nice little option for He's them. a nice player. And, and, and Juice is, you know, they utilize the fullback, and that's where we're going to put him because I can't have a fullback category. Right, and who would the Eagles fullback be? Honestly, Goddard, <laughs> like the way they like use Trey him as a, as a lead blocker. Trey Sermon's their fullback. Um, I, I keep getting people every week ask me why the Eagles don't have Trey Sermon up. I get the people that Trey Sermon has fans. He, he might be able to play. They just rushed for 268 yards in a playoff game. Like, what do you want them to do? Yeah, I'm, I don't think that's a need right now. Uh, McCaffrey's really, really good. And all these guys, I mean, even Juice catches the ball well. I mean, he's he's a weapon down at the goal line, great blocker. Um, so, yeah, I'm, they're they're better. Yeah. The next one might be the toughest one. Very close. It is very close. Wide receiver, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins versus Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Jawan Jennings. That is tight. It is. I, I'm going to give the edge to the Eagles here. I am, too. I, I'm a little surprised. I thought you were going to go 49ers. I'm going Eagles, too, but it's it's close. It, it is. I, I would like to see Quez play better, be more of a factor when the ball comes his way, but um, – I think this could be a a quiz game. It could be. Yeah, he was my um, he was my pick for this year's Patrick Robinson. Like this year's kind of off the radar in the championship game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I think I, I just think AJ and Devonte, especially the second half of the year, are playing at such a high level. Yeah, uh, they've Deep, been the best tandem yeah. in the league. Great. I mean, the two guys in Miami are close, but their season's over. So, yeah. Yeah, I, Debo probably has the career over AJ. Yeah. But right now, yeah, you know, that's tough. And Devontae, Ayuk's really good. Really good. Uh, and he's gotten so much better. I, I think I would give a slight advantage to Devontae there, but that's closer than I think people realize, especially people who haven't watched Ayuk a lot. He's really good. Yeah, he is. He is. It's a, it's. There's going to be some some – Real talent at every position in this game, but the wide receivers mm-hmm. going to be great. Yeah, uh, another really tough one here. Tight end Dallas Goddard versus George Kittle. They're two of the best, and I mean, I, I'm going to give Kittle the edge. Yeah, me too. We're agreeing too much so far. Um, Eleven touchdowns to what three for Goddard, but I mean, it's different offenses, but and they're not. You know, look, their numbers are pretty similar this year. And really, over the last few years, they're fairly similar. Kittle's just, I, I just think he's a little bit better. Yeah. And um, I don't know about talent, but it's like he, I kind of give the nod of experience a yeah. little bit. And he's done it for so long. And I always look to Kittle as like the Goddard ceiling. You know, I would agree with that. Like because they're kind of similar play styles, both good blockers at the line of scrimmage, but can can get you big explosive plays and Kittle. I mean, over the last three years, Goddard has better numbers, but Kittle had those couple years where he had like 12, 1300 mm-hmm. yards. So maybe and he still has that talent. He's, he's missed some time. Yeah. I mean, he only missed, I think one game this year yeah. and he only, you know, he was in, in the seven hundreds right where Goddard was and he missed five games. So got, I mean, Goddard's yards per game. He was actually second to Kelsey this mm-hmm. year. And over the last two years, he's fifth just behind, just behind Kittle. Um, I just think Kittle's maybe just a, 
I guess I'm going on, you know, what he did in those like 18 and 19 when he was, I mean, he was on Kelsey level or, or above. He was the best tight end in the league. Goddard hasn't been that yet. So I think that's that's my tiebreaker. They're very close. Could this be like a passing torch game? Interesting. Well, we might be sitting in this room doing our budget after uh, doing our story budget, and you, can, yeah. you might be writing that. Yeah, maybe. Could see that. Uh, O-line. So uh, Eagles, Mylotta, Dickerson, Kelsey, Samalu, Johnson, 49ers, Williams, Banks, Brendel, Burford, McGlinchey. Yeah, I'm giving the edge to the Eagles here. Me too. I think the Niners have the best overall player of that group. We disagreed about that on Tuesday's pod. But, uh, yeah, the Eagles have a better line in totality for sure. Yeah, you're talking about Trent Williams. He is he is he's an amazing player. And yeah. the best O-lineman on both teams is 34, which yeah. – you, you can make a case for Lane being the best on the Eagles. You could. Yeah, you could. But uh, I think Kelsey's had, had a – had a hell of a year too. So was Lane. Yeah. But um, I give the, I give the edge to the Eagles, I, I, especially coming off that game. I really like the way their line played against the giants. It was which, great. Uh, I get it's the giants, but the yards before contact in that game. Outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> Just outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. Game. was running 17 yards before anybody touched them <laughs> at the end of the game. They, they, they'd given up by then, uh, but I'll, I'll give the edge to the, I mean, they're both, they both have good lines. Eagles are better. Yeah, I mean, they don't have a weak spot on that line. They don't. The, the 49ers do. Yeah. I mean, everything right of Trent Williams <laughs> yeah. is, is weaker than the Eagles. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely advantage Eagles. So, we actually agree all on offense. We are, we're three Eagles, two 49ers. All right, defense. Uh, defensive line. And I, I'm listing the starters here. We know there are other guys who play a lot. So, Reddick, Sweat, Hargrave, and Cox. I went four down versus Bosa, Armstead, Kinlaw, and Ebuchan. Yeah. I mean, the, the Niners have some real studs there. I mean, uh, Armstead, you saw, I mean, he, he wrecked that Dallas game. He was, he was all over the place. Uh, Kinlaw is tremendous. Um, I, I just, that Eagles depth, I mean, they're so deep. They bring in waves of guys, inside guys, outside guys. Uh, I got to give the edge to the Eagles here. I do too, and it because it goes so much beyond the starting group here. Because I, look, I think Bose is probably the best player of the bunch. Yeah, but Reddick's right behind him. He really yeah. is. He's right behind him. Yeah. It, it, that gap is not as big as some people think it is. Um, but after that, you know, Sweat has been incredible. Hargrave has been great. Fletcher has been fine. Um, Brandon Graham coming in off the bench and. Milton Williams, who, gosh, he's been so good down there. We were just talking about Milton before we started recording. He's been so good. He's like one of one of the Eagle Eye podcast favorite players. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a he's he should be a fan favorite if he's not already because yeah. the way he plays is yeah. so much fun. He is he does not give up on plays, and it's one of the things they liked about him coming out of college. And they obviously drafted him for his physical tools, but he he's. He pursues and he like there are times in this game where like Brock Purdy's dancing around. I wouldn't be surprised to see Milton clean up on a sack. Yeah. Remember uh Gary Reasons, the the old Giants linebacker? I don't. Or Gary Reasons. He was like went on in the LT group and those guys, they went to the same high school, Milton Williams and Gary Reasons. I learned that yesterday talking to Milton. Crowley High School in Texas. Is that right? How look. many high schools are there in Texas? Like everybody from Texas is from someplace else. Well, it's a pretty big state. I don't know if you've checked out a map recently. <laughs> yeah. Gary Reasons. I have he, a map of Texas over, I mean, over my bed. When Gary Reasons played, I was a baby. When Gary Reasons played, I was covering the Eagles. <laughs> oh, he, was, he played 84 to 92. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't alive for some of that. So, And they both went to college in Louisiana, interestingly. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we, we both give it to the Eagles there. Linebacker. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. TJ Edwards and Kaiser White uh, versus Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. Yeah, it's a little bit of a mismatch there. As as well as Ty, you know, TJ has played. Uh, he's been really solid this year. And I think Kaiser has played better, I think, over the last few games. I agree. That's kind of been an under-reported yeah. storyline. He's played well. I think his best two games might have been his last two games, mm -hmm. honestly. Because he was like, there was a moment there coming down the stretch where 
I was like, everyone's going to target this dude yeah. in coverage, and it's not going to end well. And that was supposed to be the thing he was really good at. But, right. Mm, it was rough there for a minute. It was. Uh, but obviously, I mean, Warner and Greenlaw are just – those guys are so much fun to watch if, if you appreciate – you know, good defensive football. They're they're fast. They're physical. They just blow up plays. And they're they're uh, Warner is Warner is a guy who he's so instinctive. Uh, you know, he he it, he just like he's always where the ball is. It's crazy. And if he's not, he's fast enough to get there. It's, yeah. it's he's a scary player. Uh, it's funny too because like Bosa is probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year. I could make a really strong argument that Fred Warner is our best defensive player. You could make that argument. And he means more to that defense. Yeah. Yeah. You're the, probably right. The things he does allow them to call the game the way D'Amico calls it. He's That's so true. good. And it's all D'Amico was a, was a really good player, made two Pro Bowls, but it's almost like Warner is the embodiment of D'Amico. Yeah. But like he's got D'Amico's brain with a better body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, D'Amico is really good there. I mean, he didn't make any Pro Bowls here, but he made two in Houston. Um, but I think the one year he could have here, mm -hmm. the one year he could have, he was a really solid player, even when he was here later in his career. Uh, it was a shame, you know, he had that Achilles um, in Houston. In Houston. In Houston. Uh, it's funny that they're interviewing him for that job. I believe he's, I should check this, but I know he, like that turf down there or that, the, the grass that they bring in in pallets, um, he kind of blames it for yeah. for the Achilles. Yeah. I'm looking up to – I saw Chris Jenkins. Yeah, he make... did. He did sue the NFL and the Texans. Really? Over the injury. I wanted to make sure that was right before I said Maybe it. the settlement is that they give him the head coaching job. <laughs> or the punishment is yeah. that they give him the head coaching job. Uh, he'll do well. I mean, it might take him a couple of years, but he'll he'll be a hell of a coach. Anyone who's ever met D'Amico has full faith that – um, now, would he qualify as Andy Reid coaching tree? I guess not, because he just played, he just under, played him, under him. And he played under him for one season. One year, yeah, yeah. 2012. Um, I covered uh, I covered Chris Jenkins making a jumper in that building, too, mm -hmm. that same building. I've, I've spent a lot of time in that building. On the other side <laughs> of, this, of the building. All right, uh, cornerback. Darius Slay, James Bradbury. For the sake of this, I'm going to say Avante Maddox. Sure. Um, that could obviously change depending on his health, but those three versus Trafarius Ward, Diamador Lenore, and Jimmy Ward. Yeah, and teams have gone over Ward, gone after Ward deep, mm -hmm. um, which I think is the one kind of when you look at that 49ers defense, that's the one maybe Achilles heel, not to make any kind of transition from Achilles. <laughs> um, giving up 11 pass plays of 40 or more yards. Have you seen the uh... third most in the league? Um, the the Wheel of Fortune clip going around. No. The guy uh, had all the letters up there, and it was uh, the last word was Achilles, but he didn't know it, so he read it, and the last word goes Achilles. And I'm like, no, I think it's Pat, Pat Sajak. He goes, oh, uh, sorry, we can't we can't give that to you. It's the most embarrassing moment I've seen on television in a while. Kind of like the guy who thought uh, Fletcher Cox was Josh Sweat. Was it that <laughs> level of embarrassment? Mr. Sweat, do you have a second? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're both good corners. They're both pretty solid. Um, Lenore is the weak spot. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Like, um, if I'm the Eagles, I'm whether, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious to see if Ward, the first Ward, Travis, <laughs> that's confusing, by the way, having two guys named Ward in the secondary. Yeah. But if Charvarius Ward travels, with AJ, then that means Devontae's on Lenore all game. I will take that matchup eight yeah. days of the week. That should be a song. <laughs> um, I, I'll give the edge to the Eagles there, um, especially if Avante plays. I, it sort of looked like maybe. If he has any chance to play, you, you're playing him. Why not? Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, those, I mean, and Slay and Bradbury have been so good all year. So I think it's going to be interesting how the game is called because I mean, Slay and Bradbury are physical guys. Mm -hmm. They'll get their hands on you. Yeah. Um, if, if it's called really tight, they're going to get, you know, they're going to get some penalties, but if it's not, I, I think, look, there's a reason this is the number one pass defense in the league. Part of it's pressure, but you know, they've both been, they've both been solid and it was good to see Slay how to have a bounce back game. Cause I thought he was a little shaky for a few weeks, but I never really worried about it. Cause I've, he's the kind of guy that when he needs to, 
when he needs to step up his game, I think he will. He's still so good. And Bradbury's just been so solid and so consistent. Um, really been impressed with him. Earning himself a lot of money. He sure is. Here, a little, uh, not gonna be here. little cash registers every time he makes a play. Yeah. Uh, safety. So for this exercise, we have Avante. <laughs> this exercise. At, uh, sound like my college at professor. Nickel. Uh, so safety, we have Marcus Epps, CJ Gardner Johnson against Talanoa Hufanga and Tashawn Gibson. Yeah, I got to give the edge to the Niners. Me too. But it's. I think this is a little closer than people might realize. Well, you know, um, I mean, there are, the Niners, both safeties are, are ball hawks, kind of like CJ. Um, I was surprised Epps didn't have more flash plays this year. That kind of surprised me. Yeah. He got his hands on a couple balls and, and didn't didn't hang on to them. Um, he had a heck of a play um, early in that Giants game in the flat. I think it was a Giants game. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, but he, I, I think Epps has just been okay this year. Hmm? I don't think he's been great in coverage. He's a big hitter. Um, CJ missed those games. You know, if you throw Reed in there, we don't know exactly how things will line up with Avante maybe playing. By the way, you feel pretty good about it. I thought Reed played really well in, yeah. in that divisional round game. Undrafted rookie in his first play, playoff game. Uh, he did. He's really been solid. And they went after him early in that game, and he gave up a play. One play, really. One play. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? So a few weeks ago, you had we had, we were on here talking about Reed, and you said, well, he might be an option next year. And I said, well, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. I'm, I caught up with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in the mix. If if they lose one of their safeties, which is very possible, yeah, um, I, I think he would be fine, honestly. I do, too. I, I mean, I think he's better than Epps. I'm not there yet? I am. Okay. I think he's close, but he's also just getting started. He started six games in his career or seven or whatever it is. But uh, I'll give the edge to the Niners there. I mean, is fun to watch, man. He's really good. He plays with his hair on fire. Uh, I think we talked about him a few weeks ago, actually. And I brought up uh, – I read a story that he met Troy Palomalu when, when Hafanga was still in high school. And and uh, he said, like, you're my idol and I want to do everything like you. And Troy kind of laid out a list of things for him to do. And one of them was, like, delete social media, which is, like, a you know, a 17-year-old kid. That's a really big yeah. deal. Uh, but he did everything, like, to a T. Uh, and you see – I mean, you see Palomalu in his game. I think he's a little susceptible – because of that aggressiveness, and I'm curious to see how the Eagles like. This is an aggressive defense, and they attack. And I think the Eagles have to try to take advantage of that. Yeah. Whether it's double moves, whether it's screen passes to slow it down, like uh, you see what's coming. You just got to be ready for that a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Uh, and special teams. Uh, Jake Elliott, Brett Kern sounds like he's still the punter. Uh, Rick Lovato and. Boston Scott and Brayton Covey are the two primary returners versus Richie Gould, Wisnowski, Pepper is their uh, their long snapper. Didn't do a deep dive on him. And then Ray Ray McLeod, who's kind of electric, but we'll put the ball on the turf a little bit. I'll start here. I'll, I'll give it to the Niners, but Eagles have come turned a corner a little bit. Yeah, I think they have. We talked to Michael Clay about that on Tuesday. They, they've just kind of maybe halfway through the season just started playing better. And I, I, Look, I was really hard on Michael Clay, and I, you know, but uh, I can credit they've, uh, without their punter, uh, with an undrafted rookie um, returner, punt returner, um, they've been better. And you have ultimate faith in, in Jake Elliott. Uh, it was certainly good to see Brett Kern have a big, really good game. I mean, three punts inside the 12 out of four punts. And his net, you know, his net was actually higher than his gross because they had negative punt return mm -hmm. yards. <laughs> the Giants had minus three total punt return yards, so his net was higher than his gross, oh, interesting. which I don't know if that's ever That's happened. probably never happened. I, I think I said Richie Gould. I knew a kid named Richie Gould. It's Robbie Gould. <laughs> uh, yeah, Robbie Gould's their kicker. and he, I mean, he's really good, too. Both kickers. The kickers are a push. I give the Niners the edge based on their returns and, and their punter. I mean, I, I it's, Jake Kelly has been great. Robbie Gould. 38 for 38 extra points in the playoffs, 29 for 29 field goals in the playoffs. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I think I think Jake's probably I like Jake better on those 55 yarders. Okay. But goal, yeah, Gold's, I mean, he's as good as anybody. He's but a robot. I, I mean, I am giving the edge to the Niners, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a lot of kickers I take over Jake Elliott. Gould's got a ton of experience, but Jake Elliott made two mm -hmm. 
you know, 42 and a 46 in the fourth quarter of a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. a close Super Bowl as a rookie. So what would have happened if they if Caleb Sturgis was kicking those field goals? I mean, he was pretty good. He was fine, yeah. Yeah, but those are – that's a high leverage. Did Caleb ever – End up anywhere? He kicks somewhere, but uh, he's uh, he's been out of the league. Um, he kicked with the Chargers in eighteen, right? Yeah, in eighteen, he was ooh nine for thirteen, long of forty nine, and that was it. Shane Steichen was there. Nine, we'll have to ask Shane about nine of fifteen on extra points. What the heck happened to Caleb Sturgis? It's not great. Didn't think we'd be talking about Caleb Sturgis today, did you? Uh, anyway, uh, we we agreed on all those, which wasn't as much fun as I was hoping for. But uh, we ended up five and five. What about coaching? Not really talent, but sure it is. Um, coaching staffs. Whew. It's tricky. It is. I, I Monday I would... through Friday, I'll I'll probably take. <laughs> 49ers. I think but. I think Nick and Steichen are I think Nick is a better game day coach. I do too. I like his aggressiveness. Shanahan's not aggressive. Um, but I don't think that's the tiebreaker. I mean, a tiebreaker is quarterback. Okay. I mean, we gave the edge to the I think Eagles. The, the tiebreaker should be long snapper. <laughs> Let me do a deep dive on that tonight for you. But I guess the that was off a few millimeters. Uh the rotation wasn't as fast as you'd like it. <laughs> I think it's uh very, very close. And I, I think that you know, that's I, what makes it so fun, though. The, this, it's there's so much talent. The Niners' biggest edge is is probably linebacker. Is linebacker? <laughs> yeah. The Eagles' biggest edge would be, gosh, maybe, um, maybe corner, maybe quarterback. I think potentially O line or O line. Yeah, it's because they're, they're, very they're, close. they're five. They're this, five deep. This is why this this game's going to be. I mean. I, I'd be stunned if this is not a one possession game. Yeah, me too. Um, maybe like you could always see like someone scores late and it doesn't really matter, but like I, I feel like it, it's going to be a close game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Agree. That was fun. Uh, next thing on our list here Nick Sirianni, not a finalist for coach of the year, which in itself is kind of a debacle that we saw play out on the internet. <laughs> um, but the AP, the Associated Press, Names named three finalists that they didn't name them. That's how the voting went. There were three in the top, uh, three got the most votes, and it was not Nick Sirianni. He finished either fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth, right? Uh, and they changed the voting this year. I like what they did. Um, where you so if you, there's a point total for first and a lower point total for second, and you add them up instead of just having everyone vote for one, and whoever gets the second most votes is second. Mm -hmm. This is a much more I don't know, to me, a much more elegant way of really determining number one and two. It's tough because it's it's an, it's an honor that never goes to coaches that always win. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I voted for Andy Reid because, I mean, the guy wins 13, 14, Yeah, can we tell people years. that you're, you're a voter? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I voted Andy one and Nick two, uh, Doug three. I mean, we did this uh, – um, Shanahan four, McDermott five. And this is a regular season award. So we actually had to have our votes in before the wild card round started. So. And that left out Dable, who is one of the finalists. Right. Left off Dable, which and I, you know, and and Dan Campbell. I thought there were seven really good, but I, I think what Nick has done this year, I mean, it, it is really remarkable. Um, but all those guys really had great and, and the thing is, Dable, you know, what did they win last year? Four games? Mm -hmm. So I think those are the guys that, but then again, Sirianni didn't get any last year. He went from yeah. nothing to nine wins in a playoff and he didn't. So I think people don't like him. Yep. Yeah, very possible. And, and people do like those other guys. And, <laughs> yeah. and he talked about that a little <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, and, he, did. Um, he, you know, he's got, he's got a personality that, um, and I wrote about this, like if he's your coach, you love him. And if he's not, you hate him. And there's certain guys in sports that bring that out in people. And um, I think he does. And if, if media is voting for this thing, which I'm happy to participate, but I don't, I don't think it's right. I don't really like, because guys hold grudges and that's why, that's, that's why T.O. didn't get in the hall of fame the first year. Well, he didn't give me an interview. He never gave me an interview, but 
I would have voted for him because mm-hmm. he, he belongs in there. So guys are biased. And uh, Phil Sheridan wrote about that. And he wrote a piece about Scott Rowland uh, making the Hall of Fame and um, and just how like he, how good he was with the media. And he never turned down an interview request. And, you know, not that he doesn't deserve to be in, but some guys like some guys don't get in because they're surly with the media. Mm-hmm. Barry Bonds, I think that's part of it. They'll never get in. Well, I think it's the well that might be head, part of it too. The head growing five sizes. <laughs> that might be part <laughs> of it, but that, that's probably a bad example. But um, the way you, the way you were with the media shouldn't be a factor in any of this. And anybody, any media member who votes based on his personal bias and whether a guy gave you an interview or not, um, shouldn't be voting. But that's, yeah. that's and, well, it's funny too because like the whole like the like there's no real criteria right either because it's become like which which coach surprised you the most and had a good season yeah really like it's not you voted for andy which is like people probably look at that and go why don't you vote for andy well because <laughs> like sustained success matters too it's kind of like those years where the mvp should go like in basketball like how many years did lebron james not win the mvp where you're like well yeah he's the best player i think steph curry won a couple of years ago right or maybe last yeah. year. Uh, Andy, if you look at his body of work, I mean, he's like, he's won it once and he's got like the third most wins in history <laughs> and second most playoff wins in history now, just behind uh, Belichick. Yeah. I wonder if he'll ever catch Belichick because Belichick will never win another one. I'm going to predict that right now. Okay. I don't know how long Andy wants to coach, but he's got Mahomes. Yeah, probably until Mahomes wants to retire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's going to, that's going to be a while, but you know, he, I mean, he's got Mahomes and uh, and Belichick has Bailey Zappi. <laughs> do, you, do you think? Uh, sorry, I was thinking about what we're actually supposed to be talking about. I just about. like saying Bailey Zappi. Uh, do you think Nick turning over play calling has like tainted him in the eyes of it some should. voters? Yeah, I know it should. I think it should actually you, strengthen his case. But do you think maybe I'm trying to get in the mind of, of voters? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I, I think like it's, he maybe like they think his contributions aren't as important because he's not. Could be. And like, oh, Shane Steichen's the guy. It's yeah. kind of like what we went through with Frank Reich. Oh, Frank's the guy, not, right. not Doug. And even though Doug was calling Doug was calling plays. plays. But Shane's a finalist for assistant coach of the year mm-hmm. with D'Amico and Ben Johnson. Yeah. So, so it makes you think that maybe like, okay, voters are seeing Shane become yeah. this hot candidate. Oh, he must be the brains behind yeah. the Eagles off. And Ben Johnson calls the plays for the Lions. Mm-hmm. Uh it, it's an interesting point. And you might be honest something. I believe personally that it's helped the team. Oh, absolutely. No, I don't think there's any question. Their record it. since he did it is like 22 and four. <laughs> so, and the thing with but Nick, people like, outside might not see that. And, and the problem is like no one sees the work that goes into game planning. Right. And that's where Nick has always been really good. It's, all, it's what he likes. Like you think back to Doug, Doug loved Colin Plays and, and he would, he just, he'll never give it up. Right. He, that's what he really loves. Nick really loves the Monday through Saturday game plan aspect of it. This right. is, we want to target this matchup and this is how we're going to do it. Like that's what he really loves. And that's what he's really good at. And just because we see one on the field doesn't mean it's more important. You could really argue that. Well, I, I would argue that game planning is more important. Oh yeah. And Especially if a play caller who's like kind of on your wavelength. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And they go, they're so hand in hand. And this is, this is Nick's offense. It's not Shane's offense. It's Nick's offense. And Shane has a big voice in it, but it's Nick's offense. Shane's just picking out the plays and he's very good at it. It, it works. It I works feel like really we well. go like swings with this. Like when, when Shane first started calling plays, there was this push from the organization. Yeah. He's calling the plays, but like it's, they, they like undervalued calling the plays. But since then, since Shane's become this hot coaching candidate, it's like swung back the other way. It's like, he calls the plays. <laughs> like, yeah, but it, there's somewhere in the middle there of importance. Yeah. yeah. It, it is important. Like no question, but, the game planning matters too, and they work hand in hand. And I don't know if one aspect is is necessarily more important than the other. I do think freeing himself of play calling has made him a better game day coach. Um, he's in touch with upstairs for challenges. He's you know for uh, the defensive guys can go over and talk to a defensive player or coach, assistant Michael Clay, whatever it is. Um, he you could just tell he's a lot more comfortable, and 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 he can be the the coach of the entire team instead of because Coley plays. I mean, you are so like, even when the defense is on the field, you're getting, you know, you're getting your menu for the next series. Yeah. And he's certainly a part of that, but yeah, it's, I think it's, especially inside two minutes, mm-hmm. like when things are going fast, you have to make these split second decisions that'll win or lose your games. You're trying to call plays on top of it. 
that's where I think we've seen some coaches get into trouble. That's fair. Yeah. Like we've seen it with Shanahan. We've seen how many times we see it with Andy Reid. Yeah. It's like there's so much going on in your brain. It's it's tough to segment it all and get everything out on time. It can be trouble. I think Shane is so good in two minute drill. I mean, he's he's so on top of his game. He's got a he's his mind is he, he's got one of those minds that is like three moves ahead of everyone else. Like even just talking to him, like I can't even keep up sometimes with the points he's making because he's <clears throat> answering questions that haven't been asked yet. He's he's gonna be a head coach, he's gonna be a really good one. Yeah, I agree. Uh next thing on our list, AJ Brown finally talked to us. On Wednesday, he knew it was coming. <laughs> he walked in the locker room with a smile on his face. He said, AJ, how you doing? We didn't talk to you after the game. Uh, look, I don't want to make too much of it. I don't want to make too little of it. It wasn't a good look, him kind of pouting on the sideline when the team's up big. But I also agree with Nick Sirianni's point that part of that is what makes him a really good player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't come down too hard on on him. It wasn't a great look. I didn't like it. Um, it's something to keep an eye on when they're losing a game. I mean, you're up 38 to seven. Just wait, wait, till, wait till you're in a locker room yeah. to to say something to someone. Um, but uh, and because the cameras are going to catch that every time. It was yeah, like you got to know it's there. Yeah, you know, and it was right like after cameras. the deep ball doesn't hit him. He comes off like kind of hobbled a little bit. I'm sure the the injury. Yeah, it's not an injury report, which is good. But I'm sure yeah. that like adds to the frustration a little bit. Do you want to um what, share his thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, my favorite quote, uh, and this was the money quote, was if you throw the ball to me 100 times, I'm gonna want it 101 times. It's a good quote. It's a good quote, and it's it's I it kind of shows the mindset. Yeah, yeah, and he's such a competitor. That's why it doesn't bother me that much, but. <clears throat> If it if it keeps happening, it's something to he's going to have to be spoken to, or yeah, it's he probably already has. Yeah, it's something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, he said he'll never be the diva receiver. He'll never blow up on the sideline. We'll see about that too. <laughs> you know, I mean, I I think that's he he doesn't want to be that, and I think that's important. But yeah, I I think he he could be in for a big game. You think they try to get him the ball? In the regular season, they do that. Yeah, a guy has a, a mistake, I or a guy be careful with that. I think so too. But yeah. we saw earlier in the year. I, gosh, what game? Oh, it was uh, Devontae when he didn't catch a pass. Mm -hmm, it was Devontae, but they did with AJ too. But you're right; like they do that. They they yeah. go to a guy. And they you should. And they but in the playoffs? But in this game, run the offense. But I do think, I th I do think he, there could be some favorable matchups there. Uh, their corners are good, but Eagles wide receivers are very good. Yeah. So I, I think he'll have a big game. Yeah. A big game in this game might be, you know, six for 71. It's one over the top. Could change everything. Yeah, you're right. It's the Nissan Thrill of the Drive event, so gift yourself what you really want this holiday season and shop your local Nissan store or visit NissanUSA.com today. Just like the holidays, these offers won't last. Opioid addiction is a national public health crisis. The Someone You Know podcast from the Independence Blue Cross Foundation offers inspiring stories that challenge stigma, offer hope, and humanize the disease of addiction. Download the new season three of Someone You Know on all major podcast platforms. Rube, I have some fun player props here. What do you got? And we just talked about AJ Brown a little bit. These player props are from points bet. Receiving yards for this game, 70.5. I just said 71, didn't I? Yeah. I guess I'm going to go over <laughs> by half a yard. I'll, I'll take the You're right on it there. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of jumble these together. Devontae Smith receiving yards, 65.5. I think he goes over. I think they're going to throw a lot. I do too. So if both of those go over, it's a good start. Yeah. For the Eagles. Certainly. I, I definitely like the Devontae over, but yeah. I think I like both overs there. I do too. Yeah. Jalen Hurts passing yards, 250.5. That's a little high for me. Okay. Well, you got you got right there with the two, and you got one thirty. Yeah, I think two fifty is a little high for me. I think it'll be in the low two hundreds. Okay. And now we'll pair it with his rushing yards, forty five point five. That's an interesting number. I think he's going to run a lot more than he it did. Was, what thirty four? Yeah. Against uh, the Giants. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take the over. And it might be scrambles too. It might just be him 
running for his life a little bit. Yeah. Problem is they have the linebacker speed to catch him. They do. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure they've faced anyone like him. Yeah, we talked about that earlier in the week, Justin Fields, but that was week one. Yeah, he hadn't discovered that he was Jim Brown yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the over on that. I'll take the under on the passing yards, 250 and a half. I'll take the over on the rushing yards because it just takes one, like 118, mm -hmm. you know, 18 yard scramble. Now you need, you know, 27 yards, 27 and a half. I'm yards. the reverser. I'm going over under. You're going over on the passing, under on the rushing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kenny Gainwell rushing yards. This is a fun one because he just had 112 yards. The first 100 yard game of his career, 10.5. It's a low number. Um, is I, that baiting you into this? It kind of is <laughs> yeah. because he could easily have no carries mm -hmm. or just a couple. Uh, and against that defense, it might take, you know, three or four carries to get to 10 and a half. Um, but I do think they saw something. I think he might have earned himself a little more playing time in situationally. Um, and I think there is value in alternating not alternating like they'd be even but um you know the change of pace back i'm, I'm gonna take the over because uh, I, I mean look you can't have a you can't go from one extreme defense to to another more than you can go from the giants to the niners yeah uh, but i i do think gainwell is is a talented kid uh and i think he'll get himself five or six carries and that should get him over 10. You would think. You would think. You would might think. not against this defense. And that Miles Sanders rushing yard is 50.5. Yeah, that's a low number. I'm going to take the under. Yeah, I, I just – I think those rushing yards are going to be – you know Hard few, to come by. Hard to come by. Uh, I'm going to take the under. It's – look, he's had a hell of a year, um, but it's hard to run against these guys. So I, I don't think they'll – Yeah. I could see Jalen being their leading rusher, which hasn't happened in quite a while. I could see that happening. Yeah. Uh, the other interesting one, Gainwell receiving yards was also 10.5. I could see them throwing some screens in this game. Yeah, I wish they were a better screen team. They're, they're not as good as they should be. With that offensive line? Yeah. I could see the tight end screen being big in this one. Yeah. Because they're so – like, the 49ers are so aggressive, and it's like you want to try to – Misdirection stuff. Yeah, like you want to try to use that against them if you can. But then just change directions and come get you on the other side of the uh, field. Like I mean, tunnel screens, though, maybe like Devontae. Those don't seem to work a lot. Yeah. But better than throwing them the quest. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And you can't you can't make those kind of mistakes against this team. You will lose. Yeah, you can't get behind the sticks. Because then yeah. they'll start pinning their ears back a little bit. Yeah. All right. It's time if, to get I your mean, if you have like if you have second and 20 against this team, I would punt. Because your odds of turning the ball over are better than your odds of converting the first down. I would punt on second and 20 every time. Third, you know, third and 20, third and 22. I don't see those odds here. <laughs> it's time to get your swagger back with Points Bet Sportsbook. Points Bet, your move. Health update. Rube, the Eagles put out an injury report on Tuesday. The shortest injury report I think I've seen in my time covering the Eagles. Especially at this point in the season. Yeah. Two guys on the list. Lane Johnson, groin limited. Avante Maddox, toe limited. So everybody on the roster participated to some extent, and that never happens. For it to happen this time of year, it, you know, uh, two weeks into the playoffs, I mean, not two games, but two weeks into the playoffs for them, the big, you know, we knew Lane would be limited. Um, he, he's he's gutting this out, and God, what a what a warrior he is. But seeing Avante, and we'll see, you know, we'll see him out there Thursday. Uh, practice was closed Wednesday. It was a walkthrough, uh, as they have been for the last six weeks or eight weeks or so. Um, Getting Avante back, if he's able to play, and uh, look, he's only played nine games this year. He's had three separate distinct injuries that have kept him out of at least two games. He's you know he's missed you know nine games now, uh, but getting him back would be really really big. He's such a good player when he's healthy. It would be big. But what I'll say is that the emergence of Reed Blankenship has made this more palatable this time. And yeah, uh, earlier in the season when Josiah was out, and as much as they say they have confidence in Josiah. If they did, they wouldn't have right. moved CJ and, and right. played Reed. Uh, it's been a pretty good secondary. Like you feel okay with it going into a game, but ideally you have all your horses back. And I wonder if there'd be any situations where Reed does play. Uh, I, I mean, he what... would maybe be the extra guy in their dime. They don't run a lot of dime. Right. Uh, I wonder if there's any situations you'd rather have him out there than Epps. 
they're kind of similar in that they're both probably not box guys. I think Reed's actually a little better in coverage than Epps. Yeah, I, I don't think they would. I don't think they would either, but I would. Uh, right after I punted for, on second and 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's interesting, though. Um, I, I Maybe Avante would be on like a snap count? Could be. But then you have so many moving pieces. Yeah. I don't think you play him if he's on a snap count. Because, yeah, you don't want to just keep changing everything all the time. Communication errors happen then. Um, Avante hasn't really played with Reed. So, you know, they haven't. Yeah, I've played together, so I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a good problem. If Avante's back, is he definitely the nickel? Well, you want to bench Slay? Play him outside? No, no, no. <laughs> play him a safety. He played safety this year. Yeah. I would, CJ's been a little groove in the nickel spot. I would I would not do that. CJ, safety, Avante, yeah. nickel. Yeah, probably. I'm just throwing out all the options here for you. Yeah. Other health, I mean Mario Goodrich for James Bradbury you can throw that out there while you're at it. AJ AJ well, this one's at least reasonable. Uh AJ Brown says he's fine, not on the injury report. Right. Um nothing there. Do we know what that was? He all he's <laughs> we do not know what it was. Um, all he would say was, I'm good, I'm good to go. That's all you need to know. So if that's all I need to know, that's all you need to know. He's, he's not on the injury report. He's good to go. Uh Jalen Hurts said he's felt better. But yeah. not on the injury report, and, you know, yeah, he's going to be sore. Yeah, he said, I felt better, but you got to do what you got to do when you got to do what you got to do when you got to do it. Something like that. Is that what he said? <laughs> Something like that. He said tongue twisters <laughs> up there. I missed it. Yeah. That's as much as I'll give you. I felt better. You don't have to give me a score, Rube, but let's finish this. It, are we on Sunday when we do this podcast, are we talking about yeah, let's get ready to go to Phoenix. Or are we talking about holy cow? They got a lot of free agents. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we might wait till that later in the week to do the free <laughs> agents. But yeah, I think uh, I think they're going to win. And I, to me, there's the two things I keep going back to are the game is across the street from us at the link, and I just think that's such a big advantage when the link is like it was the other night. It's a tough place to play, and. He's a young quarterback who hasn't been in that atmosphere and, um, you know, just hasn't experienced what he's about to experience. Maybe if he can handle it, he's for real. He's oh, he's the real thing. But uh, a lot of much more experienced quarterbacks uh, haven't been able to. So uh, we'll see. Well, I think that's a huge advantage that the game's here. Um, I think the fact that – and I think Jalen over, over Purdy, and it, it, like you said, it's crazy to say – quarterback who's never lost in his life since he was in college but Jalen's better he's just better yeah of course he is and, and that matters you know the thing with Purdy and he's look I'm not taking anything away from him what he's doing is it's never been done a seventh round pick going on a run like this but when I watched like the Cowboys game was really the first chance I had to watch him start to finish in a game and it took some of the I guess um mystique out of out of him because you see him making mistakes you see him putting the ball up for grabs you see him throwing into traffic and he could have completed a couple of those but the cowboys could have had three picks and they didn't when the eagles get those chances they've got to convert them they've got to turn them into into big plays but that took some of the mystique of brock purdy away from me just seeing that he he can mis make mistakes he will make mistakes and with this pass pressure in that stadium and you know, and and Jalen, those those are to me advantages for the Eagles. But I mean, the Niners, look, I think if the Eagles are minus one and give away takeaway, they lose. Mm -hmm. I don't think they can win this game if they're if they're minus. The Niners don't make mistakes; they're they're so solid. They don't beat themselves. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Won't be easy. I can't wait to watch it. I'm I'm going Eagles too for a lot of those reasons you just said. I think it's going to be a tight game, but. I, I think Jalen gives them an edge, and I, I think in-game management, they have a clear edge. I think the aggressiveness Sirianni showed all season, maybe it'll bite them, but I like that. I, I think that gives you an advantage on Sundays. Couldn't agree more. All right. That's it. I hope everyone enjoys the game as much as uh, we hope we all do. Uh, for Rube, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. If you enjoy the podcast, please rate, subscribe, wherever you get your pods. We'll talk to you after the game on Sunday.